hard by those cliffs and then down uh, along there. Then there's a connection to the lake through this river where there are no prominent waterfalls. It provides very good access to the sea. Eels traditionally spawn in the salt water of the Sargasso Sea, an elongated region in the middle of the North Atlantic Ocean. But exactly where in this region remains a mystery. It, it's very unique because we have never seen a spawning eel. They leave the fresh water and, and go to the ocean, and when they go to the ocean, uh, uh, the only time that we know that uh, they've been successful is their young are starting to swim back by, by way of the Gulf Stream. It's a pattern of behavior that goes back 250 million years to the time of Pangaea, the supercontinent that existed prior to the continent splitting into their current configuration. Eels evolved probably 125 million years ago. We know that they uh, survived continental drift. In other words, they lived in the ocean and started to use fresh waters before the continents divided. Is it possible that this ancient species, at home in both fresh and salt water, might have spawned a monster still living in Lake Crescent? If so, then modern technology like side-scanning sonar might help find the beast. What this is called is a, it's, it's called a fish, uh, and, and what it is something is that you tow uh, along, and it has little uh, echo sounders basically in, built into the sides of it. So what this does, it'll look at the bottom of things where things might like to hang out, sit around. How deep do you have there? 69. 69, okay, yeah. The sonar images show the areas that should be explored further with divers and submersible cameras. Plenty of water, maybe 80 feet? 70, 70. 79, but, okay. the, but the bottom is very rough there. Eels are known to hide in dark crevices and deep waters. The sonar images show that this could be an ideal habitat. There's kind of a little basin in between us and the cliff and the cliff face. Right on. So there's a rock ridge that's running underneath us that goes up here. So this is a real good place. These are going to provide caves and uh, ledges and overhangs and that sort of thing, which would be a, which would be good shelter, particularly for a for a large eel. A baited crab trap is used to attract the attention of whatever lives at the bottom of Lake Crescent. This is the area where most of the, of the sightings of any of these mysterious creatures have, have been. In a lake that's only six miles long, a few herring can go a long way, especially for the highly refined senses of a giant eel. An eel can smell a herring a thousand miles away. They, they really can. They, they are extremely sensitive. Hadrich is hoping that an easy prey will lure the monster to this spot. And Joe Nickel examines a strange set of photos that could explain the lake beast. No question. It's, if it's an eel, it's huge. The residents of Robert's Arm on the coast of Newfoundland in northeastern Canada are convinced their lake is home to a monster eel that the local media has dubbed Cressy. But Joe Nickel, as he examines the evidence, is skeptical. He's an investigator of cryptids, creatures whose existence has been reported but not scientifically proven. I have here a series of photographs and this certainly, this first photograph could be a very long um, very gigantic eel as far as one could tell from the photograph it's it's obviously long curved um, snake-like uh, you can see from some idea of the surrounding rock and so forth that it's this is not just a little something little but it's, it's, it's sizable here we see a, a where the animal's body is very flexible 
and it, it looks like a, an arch or, or a hump. In the water, we sometimes uh, hear something having a series of these as if it's moving. Very snake-like, very serpentine. No question, this is a living living creature. It's, if it's an eel, it's certainly eel-like and it's huge. Uh, then we see in the next photo a dramatic shift. We see now that we can see two creatures and we begin to they begin to look familiar to us. Otters. Uh, here it is, um, furry and not looking so sleek and wet and flexible, but this is the same creature. River otters are rare but not unknown in the area around Robert's Arm. Could locals have misidentified this lake monster? Here's a classic sea serpent, lake monster type of uh, drawing. And yet, if we look closer, if we could, uh, if we were the eyewitness and could peer underwater and see what were actually the case, we see that this is a separate animal. This is a separate animal, and we recognize them now as otters. And it's like a magician's illusion. It's an optical illusion of sorts. It's a misperception. Whatever skeptics say, locals are sure that what they are seeing are not otters or anything else known to man. I definitely saw a head and a body. Whatever it was, it was real. In 1995, Effie Colborn had the longest sighting of the creature yet. She watched the monster cross the lake for more than 15 minutes. I was just more or less in deep thought. And uh, the movement just, when I just glanced and the movement caught my eye. I went and to the window. Kind of, I saw the head as it was kind of a long feature and, uh, and the body. And when it swam, it was like a swell. There was no waves on either side. It was just a deep swell. I watched it for about 15, 20 minutes because the lake is long. And I watched it till it went to the site. I, I surmised at the time that it was probably 20 to 30 feet and could have been longer. The description you're giving me. Forensic artist Michel Fournier attempts to translate Effie's account into an accurate oh, image. Uh, any, any time I... Well, at the beginning, I said you know, what came to my mind, like a horse's head, but it was not as big as a horse's head. It was more, more slim and more pointy, but that's, that's the first thought when I saw the head. I, Look at the sketch. What do you think? Do you think that it looks like the uh, the, the, the shape of the uh, of the yes head? Yeah. Yes, sir. It kind of look like this. Yes, it is. Yeah. Anything you want to change or add or no? No. No. You're happy with this? Yes. Okay. Back on the lake, the Monster Quest expedition adds some new technology to its arsenal. Well, we're, we're up to the second day now, and uh, we've added a bunch of, of new pieces of gear, which are very exciting to have. We, one of them is a sonar, not unlike the side scan sonar that we used yesterday, but it's going to be much higher resolution. And in conjunction with that, we have an ROV, which is a wonderful little instrument. With this instrument, we hope that perhaps we might have actually be able to see Cressy at some point today. Okay, we're connected and secured. Richard Van de Voort has been working with underwater robotics for over 25 years. He has piloted remote-operated vehicles in many dangerous environments, from oil rigs to shipwrecks. But this is his first at Lake Crescent. So for today's exercise, we have our video array eyeball ROV, which is dual camera, color pan and tilt camera in the front, black and white stationary camera in the back. Uh, visibility is always a problem with operating ROVs. Um, we do have our avoidance sonar, which we deployed earlier. That allows us basically to see in the dark, so if there are any objects there, we can pick them up on sonar first. That will give us a target to fly over to with the vehicle. Grab her open. With an ability to go as deep as 1,000 feet, the ROV is the perfect way to investigate rocky outcrops, caves, and crevices where bottom-dwelling eels are most likely to be found, including possibly a mammoth species that shouldn't be here. 
the idea of a conger eel, which is one of the largest of eels and does occur in the salt water here, coming up and occasionally making its home here is perfectly, is, is believable for sure, you know. It gets lost, and this happens a, a lot in the ocean. The conger eel is a fearsome creature. They can weigh up to 200 pounds and are known by fishermen for their terrifying fighting power. They will eat anything that moves and are strong enough to take down seabirds and aquatic mammals. Their razor-sharp teeth and huge jaws easily crushing through bone and crustaceans. Heydrich has a plausible theory for how a displaced conger could grow to monstrous proportions. What happens instead of some of the food energy that it gets having to go into reproduction, uh, it, can, it can all go into growth. And so these things can grow and get very large. A 30-foot conger could reach half a ton, easily capable of overcoming and devouring a full-grown man, leaving no trace of its victim. All right then, Phil, whenever you're ready. Okay. The Monster Quest expedition crew is about to see for the first time into the deepest reaches of Lake Crescent. For nearly a century, the residents of Roberts Arm in Eastern Canada have spoken of a monster that lurks in majestic Lake Crescent. Described as serpentine, but larger than any known eel, some believe it could be a displaced ocean dweller. The Monster Quest expedition crew have captured something on their ROV camera. You're down to the bottom and the 50 bottom. feet. Yeah. Okay. Now just sticks lying there or actual trails. And they, they look to me like trails. Something's made these little tracks. Now we can't see anything right at the moment, except when you see that stuff. Now he is that is? It, uh, it could be. I mean, there's not a lot of candidates that uh, would make those tracks. There, there are, there, there are small tracks. Well, there's a big one. There's another one right there. There's something. What the heck was that? That's oh, that's the tether line. That's tether yeah, line. okay. Once the waters settle, Hadrich wonders if the trails could be typical lake bottom disturbances. A closer look shows strange patterns emerging from the murk, as if something heavy has slithered along the lake floor. It's very familiar to people that look at bottom photographs all the time to see tracks all over the bottom usually made by crabs and snails and things like that I think that this looks like a lattice work of sticks to me meanwhile investigator of cryptids Joe Nickel wants to put eyewitness claims to the test so we're gonna take this out in the middle of the lake anchor it and then ask the eyewitnesses to guesstimate the length of it. And we'll see if they're able to do that at an unknown distance. The log seems a good idea. It's, it's a natural object. It's something that people would see in a lake and sometimes do mistake for lake monsters. People make estimates, but they really don't usually have any frame of reference. They're just, it's an impression. If there's something next to it, a rock of known size, or if there's something next to it, a rock of known size, or a boat or something, then you, you would have some scale. Nickel anchors the log in the center of the eastern basin, the location of most of the Cressy sightings. As Nickel gathers the eyewitnesses for the experiment, Richard Haydrich and the team have found an excellent spot to search for an oversized and hungry eel. My belief is that, that any animal is, is, 